way to talk. Okay, hello everyone, it's me, Paige of Maces. Uh, we're up in Bonnie, Scotland. I'm here with my friend, who you might recognise if you're a fan oh. of new tricks. Adgo Padua. A bunch of the other stuff. This is the room from our, this is the view from our hostel room. So we've got some pretty cool stuff going on down there. Karaoke bar, there's the, that's the bell moral over there. Scott's Monument. Scott's Monument is there. That's smudges on the window. That's a big ball that we're not sure. Oh, that's a big ball that's got like athletic stuff in it. Bouncy things. And over there, that's some Princess Street. Leading on to a bunch of cool stuff. And this is a just a little quick thing of the room. All our stuff, all our beds, our very tiny, very claustrophobic bathroom. <laughs> but what can you expect? So good enough. good enough. Good enough for now. I stayed here last year, so we recommended it to these guys. We've got one other person that's going to join us at some point, but he got here before us because someone was late. <laughs> Okay, just standing around outside Bristow Square, just waiting for my friends. We're going to meet up for dinner a bit in a bit. This is one of the two ticket gauntlets, the other one being at the Royal Mile, which I'll show you, which is far more crowded. You can't go through one of these without picking up at least ten tickets. Put the guy with for a second, then no light shirt, arm brace. Yes. That's one of the box offices, let me just zoom out. See perhaps there the giant cow of It's a lovely cool beautiful day here. And also here we have a almost three pound bottle of rose lemonade that I got from the Elephant House Cafe. So the only reason to go there is for this and the Harry Potter stuff, although it's not the official birthplace of Harry Potter, that one's got the blue plaque on it. The official cafe where she first wrote the Philosopher's Stone. Or well, the Sorcerer's Stone for you Americans. Still waiting with my mates and got about an hour. Let me just check what the time is on my phone. There is the page phone. Just got about an hour or so to go. Oh, I've got a message. Okay, people come in five minutes. Seriously, this is overpriced but delicious. Okay, just got out of uh, the shop. Just got out of watching Murder She Didn't Write. It's freaking awesome, just got to cross the road. And, uh, you probably hear the bagpipes in the background. How Scottish is that? I know, right? We yeah, just got out of that. It's, it was really awesome. Started with a bang. Literally and figuratively. Uh, so now just heading over to Bristol Square again to go and watch Frisky and Manish that starts in a little bit. So if I turn this around now, it's a bit windy. Oh, this should be something interesting. I'll just show you guys Greyfriars Bobby. Adorable little statue. Oh, there's a taxi. Don't want to go over. Very fast, Bobby. <laughs> Adorable. And now, back over to that purple inflatable cow in the distance. Hi, Hi. How are you doing? Possibly. It'll be on my YouTube channel, but I don't know. YouTube channel? What is your YouTube channel about? Um, <laughs> let's play <laughs> mostly. <laughs> yeah. I like to see each other a bit. Thank you for your yeah, time. Yeah, first time seeing you, you were amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Have you noticed that your eyes are there? I'm going to be in the water. Yeah, nice to meet you. It's lovely to meet you. You guys have amazing energy, I must say. Like, like it's like you. I don't know. I'm just amazed, like how intense you are for the whole hour. Like, I'm impressed. I'm, impressed. I'm gonna collapse and die. Yeah, like, I'm gonna collapse and die. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna collapse and die. Ye
amazing because like uh, your Irish accent I must say was quite like convincing I was like oh you're still from Ireland that's cool <laughs> and like <laughs> no really and like I don't know so yeah <laughs> you made it it's terrible <laughs> Who's <laughs> there? Uh, that probably just tells you I know nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have a few Irish friends who like cry. Yeah. So, no, it's fine. They clearly don't know. You clearly know. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Nice to see you. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Are you coming out of the bathroom, Catherine? <laughs> this is day two and anarchy has broken out. It's dead and problems are happening in the Big Brother house. Catherine's refusing to leave the bathroom. He just smothered me in his form. Thanks very much Yeah, yep. I've got no, thanks. Uh, Very well. Due to that, yeah, it's all good. Coming to this tomorrow, I think. Oh, lovely. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be uh, a. Really yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah. Okay, right. So what they do? Just got out of the Racing Mind show. Completely freaking awesome as usual, and absolutely hilarious. Um, probably talk about more. Talk about that more, but I think I just show you the pleasants. It's like where I'm going to be spending most of my time this year. There you go. So they were performing up there. Bigger than last year's place, where they were at. Let's zoom in on the sign. That's what they were doing. I don't know who the night bus is. Yeah, they're up there. There's a pleasant courtyardy bit. So I'll go for a walk, see if my friends have texted me or not. They haven't. I should go find them, because it's almost one o'clock. Time for lunch. his way. Okay, here we have the start of the chaos of the Royal Mile. I've just been given this. I need to find a bin because it's starting to burn my fingers. Over there. Mm, if it will focus. A levitating Yoda, why not? Right, we're going to do a, have a challenge, see how many of these things I can pick up before we get to the end of it. Because now I'm doing this, no one's going to give me anything. Sorry. Thanks. Well, there's one. Tarzan monologues. Right, let's go right down the middle.
five unexplained bruises is not actually being a decent one. for kids. Thank you. 
is kind of a lot going on. Yeah, pretty bins. Under umbrella, yay, Bonnie Scotland. Just got out of. Uh, thank you. Just got out of too much time to be big eye blind by the near futurist, so that means I got to see Cecil Baldwin. And I have a photo of him with me. I am pretty much awesome. If you're wondering about the blue paint, they were putting it on people at the show. <laughs> then we all danced. Well, I just stood there kind of awkwardly and was tapping my. Clicking, clicking my fingers and tapping a bunch of stuff. Yes. So I'm now off to Zoe Lyon's mm, oh, Zoe Lyon's mustard cutter, which sounds completely bizarre. That was a taxi. Uh, just crossing over the road, going past Greyfriars Bobby again, because pretty much pinging between three locations, Pleasants, 
the underbelly uh, Bristow Square and the underbelly Cowgate, and then a couple of other places. <laughs> um, seeing one other show today, which was Racing Minds. Epic as always. Definitely. Not from the rain. It was a storm as well. Oh, now we're in my. My purple glasses, so I introduced myself to Cecil with my real name. Because he wouldn't accept calling me by my YouTube. <laughs> it's just a little quirky thing I thought of. Oh, well, never mind. So, yeah. Good day. Let's see how it ends, eh? Just pointed this advert. Because anyone was wondering. No, never. I would never do a thing like that. So don't bother asking. Right, I've got a little while before my next show, so we're in Underbelly, right to the toilets, coincidentally. Bask in the cow puns and the giant scary cow head. So my umbrella obscures all. So that's where I was yesterday to watch Frisky and Manish. Those stairs is where I went up. So we met them. There's the underbelly sign saying thanks for coming. Flowers, some really nice stalls. I think I ate those last year, they were amazing. Other the far there, and over the top there, where you can just about read Gilded Balloon, is where I'm going next. And that's a cow sticking out the side. <laughs> this is all actually purple. It looks blue on camera, but it is purple. So I like it here. Surrounded by my favourite colour. I would not call drinking outside in the rain a good call. That is a dumbass call. Because you will get a, you will get the flu. So where we're going next, the gilded balloon. First time going in here, and oh my goodness, this is probably the fanciest place I'm gonna go all French. Still peeing it down, of course, because this is Edinburgh, and this is what happens. Currently in the Edinburgh University Union. And this is a cool little eatery area. We ate there the other day at the Flaming Dragon, I believe it was. Absolutely lovely hamburgers. Actually, the proper beef burgers. Amazing. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna stop recording. Ah, I'm gonna drop my umbrella on the floor. See ya. I let you know what I think of the show afterwards. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I lied. I had to show you guys this. We're in a place that is moose head level fancy. I'm going up to the dining room right now. Oh my god. This place. I feel very out of place. So I'm going up here. Ah, oh, there's Wu Hill. Uh, right, so I'm now back from seeing my last two shows of the day, which was Zoe Lyon's Mustard Cutter, which was absolutely freaking hilarious. She did stand up. I'll take my hat off. Cause <laughs> it's the fringe, it seems to now be a thing that I can't go through the fringe without getting something stuck to my hat. And if you're that correctly, I was a cyborg. That was from Too Much Light Makes the Baby Go Blind, of which I still have the blue smudge on my face. Because I'm lazy and I can't be bothered to clean it off. But I do have a flannel that's going to be doing that before I go to bed so I don't wake up in the morning and find that I've ruined a pillowcase. Um, See, so yeah, very funny. It was stand up. She was like talking about her snobby neighbours, um, lots of other like observational comedy. It was really funny. Really, really freaking funny. Like, <laughs> I, I was. Almost pretty much a hyena. <laughs> she was just genuinely very good. I'm glad I went to see her. And then the last show I've just seen is Hurt and Anderson. They're a girl duo who did like sketch comedy. And it was a free show. It was one of the... Shut up, window. Um, is that the Scots Monument I can see? Yes, it is. I'll keep doing it like this then. Like that. There you go. It's uneven. Um, so Hurt and Anderson, they were... They were good. I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll say that. They were they were good. Um, I think the problem was I had seen a load of other shows before then, 
and problems. I've seen a load of other shows before them. It's kind of like it's the end of the day. I'm a bit tired, quite laughed out. What they did was very funny. They opened up with a song about how to cheer Nick leg up, which was very very funny. I mean, I, I am too tired to laugh. Hello, what the hostel is. Um, yeah, I think that was. It's probably why I didn't find them quite as funny as I found everyone else, just because it's like I have already seen some very good things. But they were very funny. They were. I think I don't know if it's their, like their first time at the fringe. Uh, possibly. I think for first timers, if they are first timers, they were very very good. Um, I should probably look up in the fringe guide. I have somewhere in the window keeps opening like an asshole. Look, <laughs> noisy bastard. Uh, um, yeah, if they were first timers or like second timers, if they were like the show would obviously be new, they they did really well. That's my my fine forensic forensic opinion on them. But they did quite well. Um, one or two jokes I didn't quite like. Um, but no, that like no enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was going to go see another show that starts at eleven. I'm recording this at ten, uh, quarter to ten, but. Uh, called Nymph and Erdiac. it's like another free show, but I, I am just too tired. I've been walking around all day and I didn't sleep very well last night because for some reason our toilet would not stop doing mini flushes throughout the night. It's like, you know how people pay for those um, those noise machines, they like play, like play like babbling brooks or other stuff? And this one was uh, noise of toilet gone horribly wrong. I, I did not sleep very well, waking up every uh, every couple of hours, just like, oh, why is it still going? I have no idea who used it last or whose fault it was that it suddenly malfunctioned and just like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to keep flushing and flushing and flushing and keep it all awake. Uh, no, no, nasty, nasty, nasty. <laughs> Well, it's it's pageception right here. I can see myself in my own glasses. Oh, there we go. <laughs> pageception, everybody. <laughs> we need to go deeper. I'll stop doing that. I've got some of my like, scary things. So yeah, today's been a good day. Tomorrow, uh, got a bunch more shows. I'm seeing Racing Minds again. I apart from Thursday, because we got here at like half two, so I missed their show. Uh, I haven't even booked a ticket because I knew that we wouldn't get up here until like one-ish. So I'm going to be seeing them tomorrow, seeing them again on Sunday. Um, the only show I have booked for Sunday, unless I find like a good wild card in my bag of stuff because I have so many leaflets in there, I need to go and muck it out now. And also charge this camera up because it's now giving me the <laughs> slight warning light that Paige, you need to shut up. You need to shut up and you need to charge me so people don't get bored with your shit. Yeah, it, it has that written on the screen. It's really impressive. <laughs> um, yeah, tomorrow more shows. I've uh, got a latish one tomorrow. It's not quite as late as Nymph and so I'm not going to be seeing Nymph and Erdiac at all. It did sound interesting. If they're here again next year, I'll definitely try it. I've already got one show that I need to see next time because that is very much in my idiom. It's like a live action video game. So I'm going to definitely have to go and do that again next year. Because uh, I'm fully booked at the time that it was on, so that's a bit crap. And I apologised to the guy, and I said, "I will, I will come, I will come next year. I promise." If you're here, and he's like, "Yes, yes, I will be." So, yeah, he approached me earlier because I was wearing my um, Glow Cloud T-shirt. Just like, yeah, he was on there. He lost. Ah, bossy some. May I have better luck next year. Mwah. Right, so I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna settle down and read, but there you go. There's there's the Belmoral. Belmoral Hotel. All lit up at night with the hang on. That's probably a bit better, although you can still see the reflection of still see the reflection of our bunk beds. There's a Scots monument, just not so illuminated. And same view down there. So yeah. CTFN guys, day three stuff coming in a second. Right, day three. Just finished or just. Been seeing, uh, sorry, seeing mine again this morning. Very funny. Even Boris Johnson. 
pretty much stole the show. Is that better? I still have my still have my stickers from too much light. It's a bit of a blind on my hat. This is now for tradition for me to have something stuck on my hat. Um, just waiting to see if like in an hour for uh, winter is coming, which is like a comedic version of God damn it, hair. Uh, comedic version of Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire. Apparently, they're trying. Apparently, one of the parts of it is to pick a song for the Westerosi uh, Ujima flip for the Eurovision Song Contest. So that sounds like it's going to be fun. Um, currently, enjoying a lovely sunny day. It was very, very damp yesterday. Thankfully, it's dried off a lot. Uh, and while I was waiting for Racing Minds to start, I saw Ian his lot. If you don't know who he is, he's been on um, Have I Got News For You and a bunch of other stuff. He's a very funny guy. I didn't realise he'd gotten so old though. It's kind of freaky. I've not really watched Have I Got News For You for ages. Um, yeah, just by Underbelly by the Gilded Balloon. Again, because that's where it is. Um, still trying to work out what Amphon is. I was talking to the uh, pianist for Racing Minds as to what an Amphon was and we decided that it was a group of electric gods. So that is my on. That's, so that's what that is. I'm sticking with that. Um, I could just Google it, but where's the fun in that? Especially seeing as I've forgotten how to spell it. I think I had an I in there when I was asking about it. You know, they went to university. I I haven't. So, especially not grand university. So I don't know what those words mean. I don't really know what to do now. Um, dum 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 dum. dum. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'll speak to you guys again once I finish with winter is coming. Yeah. That's a good plan. And I am um, wearing my my other glasses today because why not? And I've already been rattled out by my real name, so it's these glasses from now on, unfortunately. Boo. Don't deceive you, that is a real person. Just heading over towards the Pleasant, so I've come out of uh, Winter is Coming, and that was a massive disappointment. Pretty much. Some bits of it were funny, but some bits were like, hello kitty. There was a kitty in a window. It was adorable. So black and fluffy. Yeah, very disappointed by it. No, sort of. There were funny bits in it, but it was just kind of weird and a bit disjointed. And they're all Australian, so I got my first real peek at Australian humour other than Adam Hill. Who oh, I find moderately amusing, but yeah. A bit disappointed with that. Too much swearing. And I mean, like, I swear a lot, but they used the C word, an extortionate amount. Hello, baby seagull. Yeah, you're going to be on YouTube. I'm going to chase you. No, that's fine. You're going home, are you? Good on you. 
So yeah, next uh, next up is Chris Turner's Pretty Fly. I saw that back in January. Pretty damn funny. So I only have one disappointing show today, unless um, Shitface Shakespeare turns out to be a bust. Hopefully it won't. I'm in the middle of the road. There's the outside of the Pleasants. I'm like two hours early for it, but what the hell. <laughs> I have no idea what my friends are doing. We've all got shows at disjointed time, so I might as well just go sit out here, play on my DS. Yes. I've got Final Fantasy, Crystal Chronicles, Echoes of Time loaded up in there already, so I know how to have fun. But yeah, winter is coming, not very good. Some bits were funny, and they got the audience involved a little bit, but yeah, bit of a disappointment. Very, very disappointed with it. Hopefully the rest of my day goes better. Not many cities you get that kind of view, eh? city is lovely in the sunset. Um, just watching some of it now out of my window because I'm back at the hostel again if you can tell by the bunk bed behind me. Um, got back from Pretty Fly a little while ago just basically recharging batteries literally and physically and literally and physically I mean also apologizing apologies for the noise in the background some jackass has a jackhammer out there by the sounds of things. Hostels. Um, yeah, literally and figuratively, I am here recharging various batteries. I've just recharged the battery on the camera, recharging my iPod because that died again, because that's got the battery life of a flea. It's old, I need a new one, but they're expensive, so. And I am very frugal, so never mind. Uh, so, Chris Turn and Pretty Fly was indeed a pretty fly. You know, that expression is. Kind of weird. I have never really understood it. Mostly because I don't wa watch, I don't listen to all that much hip hop or rap music. Uh, not really my thing, but it's kind of it was very it was a very interesting show. Uh, very funny because of course he's a comedian. Very very funny. So it's like talking a bit about how he got into hip hop and stuff like that. Some some bits that get you in the feels. Uh, very good at making making <laughs> very good puns. Uh, that he does something incredible with the periodic table. Um, if you ever get the chance to go see him, I'm not going to say what it is so you don't get spoiled. I will say it's very good, you won't see it coming. Um, so the next show on my list is Shit Fake Shapes. Sh uh, I've not been drinking, uh, apart from water and some coke, um, but Shit Fake Shakespeare is what I'm going to be watching next. Um, I think the performers do it drunk. Uh, probably the audience will always be drunk as well. I may have a drink, I may not. It all depends how much money I have on me uh, and what the. <laughs> if there's any charge on them of card machines or whatever. Uh, not sure what Shakespeare plays are going to be doing, since he did write a lot. Kind of hoping for either Twelfth Night or Merchant of Venice, because those two are my favourite. Um, I think hearing Sherlock's speech near the end of Merchant of Venice would be kind of hilarious if someone was drunk um, so still sort of like still sort of wondering what that's going to be like um, and then that's the end of day three and then tomorrow is day four the final day oh, today's our last full day um, haven't actually seen my friends at all apart from this morning um, we kind of just went our separate ways and I haven't seen them at all I'll probably see them once I get back from Ship Page Shakespeare They'll probably be asleep. I'll probably come barging in, drunk. Hello, everyone. 
then scare the living daylights out of them. Um, so yeah, going home tomorrow, kind of sad. I love it up here. Um, depending on how things go in September with the Scottish election, I may or may not be considering looking for a job up here so I can get a flat or something. I like it up here. A wee bit expensive, but that's what living in a capital city is like. But enough of my plans. Here's some random music or whatever. Until I come back with my review on Shipmate Shakespeare. Dun dun dun. Yeah, I like Roldell as well a lot growing up. Should we you just it? stick your head somewhere. Oh. <laughs> and <then> hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> I thought uh, that. It's at least has to look at when she wakes up in the morning. <laughs> it's terrifying viewers, I know. <laughs> I really like Dick King Smith as well. And I remember um, I had this audio tape of Martin's mic. And I still have like the voice of Martin in my head. <laughs> the voice of Martin <laughs> telling you to burn things. <laughs> <laughs> We're basically talking about all our like our old children's books that like we've been on a lengthy diatribe of Enid Blyton, mm. which I should have probably recorded because it was very funny. I was pretending to be Anne. We were both and pretending was, to be Anne, and we got confused. Yeah, I thought there was another girl involved, but there was just a dog that made up the fight. So I had to there was George. another girl involved, but she was a tomboy. Yeah, my <laughs> voice didn't really suit George. No, my voice suited Anne a lot better. <laughs> we were both good at Anne. Yes. I think George is more like, oh, boys. So, oh, boys, come <laughs> on, let's go throwing stones at the hobo. I wish I wasn't a girl. I wish I wasn't a girl at all. <laughs> but how can you say that, George? <laughs> you know, there's something great about being a girl. We can go make blancmange and trifle and macaroons. <laughs> you can't and, be a tomboy in 1950. You have to be a feminine and make dinners and set up camps and things like that. We're also talking about the only ethnic character I can remember from an Enid Blyton story being this Greek guy that I think turned out to be evil, one of her lesser known series. Uh. And how his voice is indelibly stuck in my mind. <laughs> I love all the tapes. I know. I they make long car journeys go a lot quicker. I know, and I actually made a pen pal from one of them because I borrowed some Famous Five cassette tapes. Hey, and there cool. was a, there was a little note in them going, "If you want to have a pen pal, here's my address." That's so sweet. That was so sweet, and we like talked for a couple of years, like just writing to each other. I wonder if that happened nowadays, where people would be like, <laughs> "Who goes into a the people come and mug them and things that." Who goes into a library nowadays? Though? Oh, yeah, exactly. What's a library? What's a library? <laughs> <laughs> The youth of today. <laughs> the youth of today. <laughs> Not that we're disparaging your youth, but oh, no, that, no. That, that is the prevailing fury. And I should sit up because the blood is rushing to my head. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, I'm falling off uh, the bed. <laughs> hey, you take the camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, right. Just talking about we're talking about Disney songs. Then we segued into Disney Sing Star. Tell I... us, tell us, Catherine, the most difficult songs to do with Disney Sing Star. Well. I always seem to get the good ones, and then my sister and Lucy always get the Paint. weird, like, background noises. So, there was, um, what was the one for the Lion King? What was that? Circle of Life. Circle of Life, yes. The Swahili that <laughs> I have to sing every single time. I got so the if, melody. If, if, if you think that my Japanese singing was terrible, <laughs> singing in Swahili is even worse. <laughs> On one note. On one note. Ah, Svenga. <laughs> And, uh, and there's another one. Um, oh, what's the one that King Louis sings? Um, oh, Ain't like me. No. Uh, wanna, be, uh, wanna be a man like you. Yeah. Yeah, I always end up doing the scatting. <laughs> yeah. It's basically, if, you ha if you're if you out of the vocal range that Disney songs sing, it's incredibly <laughs> difficult for you to sing anything. It's like, I can't even sing the male mouse parts on... Um, on on in Cinderella's song, what's the what's that one? <laughs> oh, that's a really good one. Um, um, the one that makes me dance. Oh, that one. Selling to the women. You go get the trimming. Stuff. Trimming. <laughs> that's good. Oh, I hate that line. <laughs> I know you do, but it does make some sense because it's like back in those days, a woman would know how to do the sewing, so she's yeah. obviously wanting a good job to happen. There's something inside me being like. <laughs> 
It's the the twentieth, twenty first, the twenty first century feminist or equalist. Actually, <laughs> Johnson. Natural light. It's the yeah. last day dawning that dawned a long time ago. <laughs> the last day has dawned, and we can just about see outside. We've got the the Royal British Hotel right across the road, but it looks like an absolute dive from here. <laughs> oh my god, the zoom is so clear on this. We're like going through two dirty windows and it's crystal uh, clear. That's good. If a bit wobbly, because I wobble. <laughs> yeah, slightly grimy windows, I have to say. Yeah, but yeah Disney, Disney Sing Star is not for the faint of hearted or for the not professional singer. Always go for the blue. That is always the melody. <laughs> Screw you, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hi, just got out of the last Racing Mind show and my last show of The Fringe. It's currently pissing it down is the only way I can describe it. Let me just poke my thing out there. That's terrible. Um, not really going to give much of a review about the show because it was awesome as usual, but hopefully in a couple of minutes I'll be talking to them so you can get to see them on camera. Um, God knows we're going, where we're going to do this because there is literally nowhere dry. I'm standing here out in the middle of nowhere uh, getting soaked. This is just fantastic. I'm going to have to go and stand under an umbrella with an umbrella open. That's how wet it is. I'm not kidding you here. Do you want to come back and see Kate? Kate. Clay. Oh, is that good? She's in my venue. Well, that's in my venue. Oh, in the photo? Yeah, that's because yeah, flies are there. Um, I mean, that's the boring part. So I might yeah, see that. So I might get like. I'll just insert extra board. footage of my cat pissing yeah. about. <laughs> cool. Do you do a quick plug? I'll do a quick plug. Racing minds, and now for something completely improvised. 11:45 at the Pleasant Upstairs every day of the Edinburgh Fringe. And of course, if you can't get here, they'll have a show at some point. When the fringe is over. And support Page of Maces. The best things in life are weird. It's not focusing properly. <laughs> Stupid camera. Need a better macro lens. <laughs> that was pretty good. I don't think I made a bigger video out of myself as I would probably have. I was going to then take you guys to see the Edinburgh Castle, but because it's slippery and wet and disgusting, I'm standing here by this ominously humming stage instead. And uh, now just waiting for friends because we'll be going home soon and it's going to be sad. So I'll get up here. Uh, so yeah, I have to go and find something to do for an hour. That doesn't involve standing out in the rain. Not putting any of these guys off though. I only got flyered twice getting up here. I caught <laughs> That's a pretty, pretty decent thing. Right. I'm gonna go get something, something warm. Are you ready, Carl? You're um, very tall. Right. And yesterday, Carl comes in. Oh, we started. What's happening? Oh, we started. So, what, what do you want from us? What, what is this video blog? It's for my YouTube channel, and you've right. just used my surname, so I'm gonna have to edit that out. Oh. Well, you know. Sorry, can you open that and take the. There you go. Oh, yeah, of course. Take the card and follow the instructions on the card. Okay, cool. It's literally just like a little quick thing because I've gotten a couple of like mini interviews with a couple of other people, like Frisky and Manish and stuff. Is he allowed to tell us the instructions on the card? Yes. Okay, cool. So please stop me if I start gibbering like an idiot. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I will stop you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you set me up. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. That's cool. Okay. That, that's the instructions. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so, page of maces. Yes. Um, uh, what, what would you like to ask about our Edinburgh show? Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not a really good start. Okay. Um. You know. So these are the. Four of the five racing minds, guys. One of the other ones is off somewhere. He's on the phone. He's on the phone. important one. On, on the I'm phone. I'm the handsome one. Film's the tall one. Uh, Tom is the, uh, the Swedish one. And uh, Daniel, Daniel's the trickster one. 
didn't really exist. Yeah, little known fact about racing minds, Daniel Roberts doesn't exist. But he exists in the collective willpower of the audience. Yeah, that's it. He only exists yeah. whilst being perceived uh, as this apparently ooh, postulated that is a fact the existence of Daniel Roberts. I, once, I was discussing the existence of Daniel Roberts with Dougie and I said, I refute it thus and tried to kick Daniel. It wasn't that. Yeah, it worked a treat. Yeah. Uh, and while the rest of us are kept in perpetual existence by the observation of God, <laughs> Daniel... Daniel's godless. Yeah, he just God doesn't observe him, so then he just stops existing outside of shows. But he opted out, to be fair. Oh, oh, sure, he opted out, but I don't think he fully understood what he was opting out of. No, he didn't read the terms of the Always read the terms and conditions, especially when you're dealing with God. Or YouTube. Or YouTube? Yeah, that's right. Uh, anything you want to add, Tom? Up. Got the day. Yep. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's Swedish. This is team. This is team. Blue and white flats. Rangers are playing hearts in the Scottish Championship this afternoon. I never thought I'd see the day. I never <laughs> thought I'd see <laughs> the day. <laughs> Tom is uh, working on his fourth Scandi crime novel. Yes. He's uh, following the sort of life and crimes and investigations of a uh, sort of young crooked PI called, uh, what are they called? Uh, Ulna Harbrick. Ulna Harbrick. Mm. should buy it. She's from Malmö. <laughs> When's it coming out? 2015 in South Africa. In South Africa. Yeah, so all my viewers head down to South Africa, Africa to go and get this awesome book. And we recommend Even if you can't read. Yeah, the giant, not being able to read won't really do you much harm over this book. No, it's a picture book. It's a picture book. It's entirely <laughs> illustrated pop-up Scandi crime. Yes. It's great. You can have sort of young murder victims whose kind of parts you can just put out. Various you points. do the autopsy yourself. Are there stickers too? Yes. You, you, uh, uh, you, you stick on who you think the murderer is and then you see at the end if it's right. Don't. That sounds remarkably like a show I saw on the first day. What is it called? Murder She Didn't Write. Well, we'll, we'll have to sue, won't we? Well, yeah, they're our friends. Yeah. We'll sue them. Too bad. Am I handy, though? We're going to go to the highest court in the land. We all like no, handy. not the basketball court. It's a joke. Yeah, sorry, I was thinking So, as you probably noticed, the quality of this interview has taken a marked dip. Yeah. Since Chris has arrived, exactly. I was trying to say it's the biggest coup for our government since we banned uh, homosexuals, and uh, just you know every every time, you know, uh, shuffle a turn here. Wait, wait, wait! I've got a joke. That's why You're I do it. That's, why, position, that's so. why I make it obvious. That's why I go. Oh, 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 oh. Then everyone knows I've got a joke. Whereas well, if you try to be subtle and do it properly, uh, that's the joke. Yeah, there are some people who try to seamlessly weave. I don't the narrative. Humor. Yeah, I know. I know you. You see, Joe's more sort of little raisins to put into the cape of the narrative. Yeah, rather than bake them in, you put them on top. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Um, what do you want for lunch? We bite. We bite. We come back and see Kate. Kate, hey. play. Oh, is that good? She's in my, my venue. Well, oh, that's in my venue. Oh, in the in the footer. Yeah, in the back I know that because. Yeah, um, I mean, the boring part. So I I'm might get yeah, that, so I might get like... I'll just insert extra footage yeah. of my cat pissing about. <laughs> cool. Do you do a quick plug? I'll do a quick plug. Racing Minds, and now for something completely improvised. 11.45 at the Pleasant Upstairs every day of the Edinburgh Fringe. And of course, if you can't get here, they'll have a show at some point when the Fringe is over. And support Page of Maces. The best things in life are weird. It's not focusing properly. <laughs> Stupid camera. Need about a macro lens. Yeah, that was pretty good. I don't think I made a bigger video out of myself as I would probably have. Was going to then take you guys to see the Edinburgh Castle, but because it's slippery and wet and disgusting, I'm standing here by this ominously humming stage instead. And now just waiting for friends because we'll be going home soon. And it's gonna be sad. So get up with it. so yeah, I have to go and find something to do for an hour. That doesn't involve standing out in the rain. Not putting any of these guys off though.
I only got fired twice getting up here. I caught <laughs> that's a pretty pretty decent thing. Right. I'm gonna go get something something warm. Okay, so also I wanted to talk about um, S no, S H asterisk T Shakespeare um, face Shakespeare. Uh, can't really say the word because there are the kids on the train. So I'm trying to be polite. Um, it was really funny. I I wasn't sure, quite sure how it was going to go, as I said earlier. But um, basically, what happens is I've got six actors. Only one of them is drunk. And then everyone's like playing it straight, well as straight as you can, <laughs> and another one is literally just plastered. And you've got three chances to get him even more drunk than he is. Like someone got given a gong, another person got given a bugle, and he, yeah, basically you was one use only, and then you could get him drunker if you thought he was getting sober. And it's very funny, they did Two Gentlemen of Verona, so I'm definitely going to have to read that play because it sounds hilarious. Well, it could just be because the drunk guy made it very funny. Uh, the funniest bit of it was when one of the sober cast mates was trying to tear up a plastic flower to like represent all the people that she loved, only to um, have trouble with it and ended up separating the stalk from the head. And she threw the stalk on the floor and it landed vertically on the stage, so for the rest of the play it was sticking out of the stage. And the drunk guy came and was like, look at that! Look at that! That is magic! But the stage looks even magnet. And then he pretended to, for the rest of the scene, to be a gardener that was talking to the daisy and then he became a sunflower. So that was absolutely hilarious. I think that was probably the hardest that I laughed, just because it was so unpredictable and insane. Um, and I also noticed that some of the artwork they had done for the thing looked remarkably, um, shall I say, it's like, really hard. like a certain body part. Yeah. Like Male and female. Like oh no, a, sorry. No, like a certain body part from a lady. Yes. <laughs> Which was, uh, yes. It was that kind of show, and the, the MC was pretty funny as well because he was like coming on, explaining all the rules. It's all very health and safety conscious, but even in this sort of like thing, we could still we could still do stuff like that. And apparently, the person that gets drunk changes every show, <laughs> which is good. Which is good. Having um, their liver. Yeah, a month of just getting plastered would be bad on your liver. Yes. So yeah, she's been great. No, no, no. Okay. So we're now on the way back home. There we have the Scottish countryside scrolling by. Yeah. Lovely, lovely weather going on. So Catherine, yeah. or Matt from, how do you want to be uh, memorial? Yeah. Matt. Matt. Yeah. Right, Matt then. So um, what was your favourite show of the Fringe your best, and your best moment, I guess? Okay, my favourite um, show was Peter Nails, Happenstance. You know why she wanted to be on Where? Pleasant's Courtyard. And then your worst show and your least favourite moment, which I'm, I think I know which one you're going to talk about. Okay. Oh, right. So worst show.
favourite show of the Fringe and, and best moment of the Fringe. Favourite show? Now, she can't really probably Imran Yusuf, Raw of the Underdog. Comedian. And what can I say? He's a uh, very, very real. Very funny also, like, he's kind of culturally aware, um, like, kind of spiritually aware. He, he, he kind of sees the kind of contradictions and the funny side to religion, but he's also committed to Muslim, so he's kind of, I don't know. He, he makes fun of things, but he's really got fun. So I really enjoyed his show a lot, and I recommend you look it up on YouTube. And, yeah, that's my favourite show. Best moment? Best moment was probably in a different show, run by the Voice Festival UK, who are a charity dedicated to improving the profile of acapella music within the United Kingdom. And, uh, Bizarrely specific charities. They rock. They rock my world, baby. Seriously. No word of a lie. And um, was that their gig? They had a showcase of all these acapella bands and um, they just, there was a huge church and they just lit it up with the so most rich yeah. textured yeah. soundscape you can imagine. It was like so alive in there right now. I mean like, it, it touched me and it moved me and it changed me. I am not, I'm not the same person I was. No, we can all vouch for that. So uh, worst, worst show. Or was there no such thing for you? Were worst you lucky? show. I had the uh, misfortune of trusting a good old friend of mine. As a general rule, she has good taste. Fortunately, this doesn't always hold. So, I always heard to Nicholas Parsons, which has already been mentioned. Nicholas the Darling. I have to say, I didn't ask him to come with me, he just decided he wanted to. And um, Nicholas Parsons. Well, he's very old, which I respect. You know, when I'm 90, I want to be rocking the stage like him, except he doesn't really rock. And I just get the feeling he shakes a little bit. He thinks he's better than he is. He thinks he's funnier than he is. And no offense, Nicholas, you're an absolute darling. I love you, baby. Oh, yeah. But. Please, we're trying to keep this PG 13. I mean, uh, PG 12A. No. Although you did have some good guests. Particularly the Suito Afro Pop. Opera? Opera! Thank you! The Suito Afro Pop Opera, who are completely awesome, and they also produced a sound that was like no other. Some people aren't able to appreciate music. Some people only really like acapella. <laughs> Okay, so worst moment, I guess I know what it was, was uh, the journey up here without your two best friends. Actually, no. The worst moment was my journey up here without one of my best friends. The other of my best friends, well, she's been downgraded. <laughs> and it's not the one holding the camera, right? No, of course, of course not. You're, you're still, you're still higher than I am. So. No, of course. <laughs> All right. So, uh, who wants to hold the camera? So, okay. Yeah. So, your best shed. My best show. This is really difficult because I saw so many good ones. Um, I think, to be fair, I'm probably going to say racing. To be fair, I'd probably just say racing mines and that. But I've seen so many good ones. So, I'm going to pick one I didn't see before, and that was Zoe Lyons Mustard Cutter. Like she is, she is razor sharp and like red hot. She was just awesome. For sure, I didn't know, I didn't, wasn't sure what to expect. She like wowed me completely. It was just so, it was hilarious just seeing her just like, like really expressive, really funny, really inventive, getting one over on snobby short resistance and things like that. And her little anecdote about this old lady that came into this ultra cool club 
went um, trying looking for samba lessons because she was in because apparently she lived in Brazil and was like had the best crack cocaine ever when she was in Brazil. So that that that, that story was just I found that really funny. It's great when you find like a little hidden gem like that that you've never really heard of before. Yeah, well, I've, I've that's cool. I've seen her on Mock a week a couple of times, but it didn't click until I got out of it. So, oh, she's that one. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that was a gamble that paid off. Yeah. Um, and how about your best moment? My best moment was probably getting a fo- photo with the voice of Night Vale, Cecil Baldwin. Hey. It was, it was pretty damn cool, and I kind of made a new friend. Hi, Sebastian. <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty damn awesome, getting to see him and having photos taken with him. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. Similar to my best moment. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and how about your worst show? Worst show, Winter is Coming. Mm. Why was that? Um, although it did make me laugh a couple of occasions, I felt like they were taking yeah, some of it a bit, a bit too seriously. Like the main guy um, in it, who was like a bit egotistical, and there was quite a lot of... Well, they were all Australian, so I know the way that they refer to each other can be a bit different than it is over here, but he seemed to be insulting one of the girls quite a lot, and that didn't really sit well with me at all. Mm. I didn't find that funny. And it was very sort of disjointed, um, disjointed, and I didn't really enjoy it. I thought it would be really great. You have to be able to feel like they actually like each other off stage, and when you're not sure about it, then it's awkward, yeah. Yeah, it, it looked like they were just like four people that hated each other, plus the mm. pianist. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like one one um, quintet was really great, and the other one just plain sucked. Oh, that's a shame. But you live and learn. There's always like one show I find that I don't like when I come to the fringe. So that's all right. You have to gamble, I suppose. Um, how about your worst moment? Worst moment was first night we were up there. Someone broke the toilet, so it flushed all night through, and I like, couldn't sleep. And we realised the day after that you had to just like pull the flush back out again. It was like a button, but we didn't realise that until I was the morning the one after. That it twice. <laughs> Yay! Yay. So the plumber only didn't know it. Yep. So that's all it for my um, Edinburgh Vlog. It's been really fun. Looking forward to coming back next year if it's as easy for us to get back up there. Because everything relies on everything relies on what happens on September. Yeah. If we need to get a visa to go there, then <laughs> no. But yeah. So for now, I'm Paige of Maces. This will be my final TTF.